Hello my friends and welcome back to a new episode of Flutter Explained. Today we have a very special news because yesterday um, Zoe Fan released a Medium article about CodePen support for Flutter and I just wanted to share with you why this is such a big deal and why this is so important for us. And now let's get into it. So I already talked about that Zoe Fan, one of the product managers of the Flutter team, released one uh, Medium article where she explains to us that they released now a code pen support for Flutter development. Well, a lot of you would say, okay, that is not so important because we had already DartPad, but DartPad is just one technology that was supported mostly by Google. One of the things is, and I think the strategy of Google here to support CodePen is absolutely to bring people, designers, people who are more creative, who knows how this stuff works, that are usually working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, transfer slightly to Flutter. And this is really a very good um, solution for that and it's also a very big impact and we could see that yesterday on Twitter all over everyone was just wow it works now and how does this work because inside of that article I was not so easy to find you have here two links either from scratch or an existing template both of these links bring you to different pages so as you can see it, this is like a template that we can use and if you are logged in you can also save that as your own pen so a pen is a snippet in code pen and now i can name that for example flutter template and if i do so i can also save that one in the settings, you can also choose template and down here, you can make that a template. And what does this mean is if you are just in CodePen itself, you can then click here on from template and click on Flutter template. And as you can see, it starts up all the stuff like in a dark pad. And after a second, we should see our build some widgets. And what we can do now on that side is for example, adding an app bar. Uh, and different to um, the good old dark pad, we don't have actually a code completion, unfortunately. So I can't uh, just press control and space to get my completion, but I know some stuff, right? So I, like title uh, is a text widget, like uh, hello YouTube. And if I save that, <clears throat> we can see it's getting updated and I can give that a title like app bar hello YouTube. And if I save that now here, we get a pen saved. And if I go to my profile, we can find um, the different projects that I have. So if you go to your dashboard, you will find the different pens that you have already created. Like for example, this one where I created an error. Isn't it beautiful? Now the other opportunity that CodePen delivers us is that we can also see the code pens from other designers. So if we go back to our uh, Medium article where we have the two links that you will find also down in the video description, you have also from an existing template. And if we jump inside here, we're coming to the topic Flutter. And here we see some very interesting pattern and templates already, like for example, the neuromorphic clock. And we can just create a new pen out of it. So we can use here, we can see all the source code, how it works, how it works and how it is. We can also use it because Flutter web is awesome. And then what we can do is we can also modify the whole thing if we want. So for example, I can change the numbers here like 100 and also 100 and see what happens with that. Most likely I break something, but that is the cool thing. We can just change it in the browser. We see the result. The good thing here is absolutely that um, we have a lot of code pens with JavaScript, HTML and CSS. And I'm absolutely certain that a lot of designers will find now Flutter more easily and start by picking up that new technology, playing around, looking how it looks like. And this is an absolutely awesome feature, I think. Speaking about sharing with others, the major benefit of CodePen is that we can just copy that URL on top of here. And if I go now to a private browser where I'm not logged in or anything, we can share that code with others immediately. It works out of the box. The huge benefit of that is that we can now just use that URL up there and send it via um, a link, for example, for Stack Overflow questions. And that is a major difference between DartPad and here, because for DartPad, we had always to create gists in GitHub, and then we could add that as a DartPad, which was a bit more complicated. So now we have that nice fluent workflow here, and this will help a lot of people. Another example that is already in CodePen is the swipeable from G Skinner. So you can see that gluey swipeable uh, effect here. And that is awesome that it is directly working in the browser. 
That is uh, the Paris travel hero animation from Guy Skinner. So if we click on learn more, we can see a nice little transition between the two pages and with a stacked animation and it's so awesome. The G Skinner is really good with animations. I really enjoy their, their work, that is amazing. So then we have the Clock of Clocks from Igor Bedibov. You can see it is made out of a lot of uh, clocks and it creates the clock. It's also from the Flutter Clock Challenge, just amazing. And we have the Flutter Yeti from MKSoft that follows your mouse cursor when you move it. So if you are underneath the Flutter topic, you can see a lot of different possible designs that you can open up, you can try around, and you can even suggest your own content for the Flutter topic. And if you are lucky, you get also approved and your stuff is app applied to it. And so I can just say, I like it, I love it. Try it out yourself, go to codepen.io and start developing your examples and share them down in the comments below. All right, thank you for joining me today. That was my short trip via CodePen. Really check it out, it's awesome. See you the next time, give that video a like and thank you for watching. See ya guys.